All right, in this video, we're gonna be creating a macro to make a pivot table. So we'll just start with the recording and then we'll see what potential problems we'll have with our recording and try to fix those to make our macro work in different cases. So let's start by taking this data and quickly creating a pivot table out of it. I'm gonna go under developer tab, record macro. I'm gonna call this create pivot. Hit OK. Now we're recording. So I'm not going to explain what pivot tables are if you don't already know in this video. In this one, I'm just going to go ahead, go under insert, click pivot table. It picks up the data. I'm going to press OK. Now here, I'm going to put sales in values, sales reps in rows, and region in columns. I'll also right click on one of these values, go under number format, apply some formatting, so I'll do currency and hit OK. So by the way, it's important to change the formatting this way instead of trying to just highlight and change the formatting. You want to change the formatting for the field in the pivot table, not for the range in Excel. So this is done. I'm gonna go to developer tab and stop this recording. Now I'm gonna go back to my data and try to run this again. And you'll see we got an error. So let's try to see why we're getting this error. If you look in this particular macro, the first line is going to create a new worksheet. So that adds a new worksheet for us in this case that ended up being sheet three. Now the next line here creates the pivot table. And to create a pivot table here, if we look, we provide the source data which has the data worksheet and then it has this R1, C1 syntax which points to from A1 through column 6 and 22nd row. That's the data source. And then the destination for this pivot table is going to be on sheet 2, the first column, third row. So that's A3. So sheet 2 was the worksheet that we used to have when we used to record this macro. But now when we run it again, it should be basically creating this on this sheet three, not on sheet two. So our destination now is incorrect. And then it continues by again, selecting that sheet two, which is again, it's gonna be incorrect worksheet and selects this cell. And then we start basically working with that pivot table and adding fields to that pivot table and formatting. All right. So now we figured out that we have to make sure that we point to the right worksheet because as we add another worksheet, the new worksheet's name is not necessarily going to be sheet two. It could be sheet three, sheet four, who knows. So what I'm going to do on top of this, I'm going to make sure that after we add our worksheet, then we'll just get the name of our current worksheet. And the way we can do that we can make a variable, call it like pivot WS, and then we'll set it to, so we do active sheet, that will be our current worksheet and name. So that will get us the name of our current worksheet. So now we'll have this pivot worksheet. And what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna copy that name and see how here it says to go to sheet two. Instead of doing that sheet two, I'm just gonna replace it without quotes, pivot WS, because this is a variable, should not be in quotes. So basically this would select the new worksheet that was created. Now in a similar way, see the sheet two? We don't want it to be sheet two. So again, that's text. I'm gonna remove that part from that text. That's the beginning until that exclamation sign, which is you know, the separator between the worksheet name and the range. And before that, I'm going to put my variable and concatenate it with the rest of this. So this will be the name of our current worksheet. And then we'll do this. So there are other ways of handling this. And we'll talk about those when we get to next level series. But for now, let's try to check this and see how this works. So I'm going to go ahead and get back to this open my data tab. This is it. I'm going to go to macros and run the same thing. 
And see, this time we were able to create that new pivot table on our sheet four, even though the name of this worksheet is different, we're able to dynamically get that and work with that. So that's one piece we did. Let's go back. So the next thing I want to do here, I want to make my data range more dynamic. So if this data had more or less rows, I want to be able to still make my pivot table. Now, right now, as is, it's just this, you know, from the first row to 22nd row. Now, to make my life easy, the first thing I'm going to try to do, I'm going to try to replace this R1C1 syntax with the regular Excel syntax. So I'm just going to replace that with A1 colon, and what's the last column there? F, F22. So now instead of R1C1, what if we try to use regular Excel A1 notation? Let's try to run this macro and see if it still works. And as you can see, we're good. It still picks up the data. So I'm going to go back to that Visual Basic. So now that we got this going, we need to now get rid of this 22 and replace it with our last row. Now, the last row for this should be coming from our original data worksheet. So when we start running this macro, initially we're going to be on this data tab. So this is where we need to get the last row. So that means before we add the worksheet, we need to get the last row of our data. And again, you'll choose the best way to get the last row. I did use the find method for the previous few videos. For this particular one, I'm going to use control up for the first column method. So I'll do cells rows dot count and then the first column. So we'll go to the bottom of the first column and then we'll do control up, which is Excel up, and then we'll get the row number. So again, if you're more interested in other ways of finding the last row, I have a very long video covering all different ways and explaining the differences. For this one, I'm just going to do this. This should get us the last row. So at this point, I'm going to go here, remove this 22, like we've been doing before, and just concatenate that LR to it. So now that I have this, I should be able to add more data. And now it should go until 42 and go back and run my macro. And let's just check if it's pointing to the right range. So I'm going to go change data source and you can see, see it goes to 42. So that works. Now we're able to move this to the last row. And again, the same way it should work if we have less. So if we have like 18, it doesn't matter because we should be finding the last row and it should just work out nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. So let's go check, change data source, see 18. Cool. So that works. So now we made it more dynamic to work with different ranges of data. Now there's one last thing we're going to change in this particular macro. And that is this worksheet right now in our code. See, it points to that data worksheet with the name data. Now, assuming that when you get your data, this worksheet is always going to be having the name data, that's fine. But if this name were to change, and we call this anything other than data, something like this. If I go back and try to run this macro, see it's going to fail because it's trying to get this data worksheet source, but there is no worksheet like that. So it just fails running the rest of this. So what I want to do, I'm going to go back to this data one. I want to first make sure that I get the name of this worksheet where the data is supposed to come from. So I'm going to get the last row of that worksheet, and I'm also going to get the name of that worksheet. I'm going to call this data WS, the variable name for data worksheet. And that worksheet at that point is going to be the active one, which means we can do active sheet dot name to get the name of that worksheet. So now this will be our data worksheet. Originally, we'll store it in a variable. And this, after we add this other worksheet, this will be that worksheet where we're going to do the pivot table. 
So I'm gonna take that variable and right here, instead of hard coding data as the worksheet name, I'm gonna do this and then we'll see the problem with that and fix that too. I'm gonna do this. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to run this and we'll see what happens and then we'll react. So I'm gonna go back and run this macro. Interestingly enough, it says one of the pivot table field names is invalid. Did I go to the data tab first? Let's try it again. That's weird. So it gives us an error with the column names, but that's not what our problem is. What is happening right now is our worksheet name for this data has a space in it. So if I remove that space, this macro will probably work. So if I do this, see, it's still not called data. Let me just do something like this and go back and run this. And you can see it works. But what happens when your worksheet for your data has some spaces? I'm gonna remove some of this. Okay, so when you have spaces in there, your worksheet syntax is gonna change. So the way this should work, I'm gonna remove this for a second and get back to our regular text here. When it's just one word, you just do data, but when there are spaces, you have to do this single quotes around that name to have correct syntax. So interestingly enough, if you have just one word and you still do those single quotes, it will still work. But if you don't do single quotes for something that has a space, it's gonna fail. So what we're going to do, we need to incorporate that in our code. So we need to replace this part, but we have to make sure in the beginning there is a, an apostrophe and in the end there is an apostrophe too. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this variable for worksheet. I'm gonna just go here, right after this first apostrophe, I'm gonna close that and concatenate that LR variable. And then I'm gonna concatenate again, open my text again, and remove all of these from here. So basically I'm adding an apostrophe in front, then our variable, which is the name of our worksheet, and then an apostrophe and the rest of this range, which is then also adding the last row. And that should create our worksheet name. Again, when we get to more advanced VBA coding, there are more cleaner and nicer ways of doing this, but for now, we'll just stick to this. So I'm gonna go macros, run. Oh, of course, I put the last row here instead of putting the name of the worksheet. That should be the name of the worksheet. This is the last row. Okay, fair enough. I'm gonna run this again, go back and run it. Here we go. We had a space, it worked out fine. We have our pivot table. Let's remove the space from this to make sure that also works with this. All fine. So now we have a working pivot table macro. So one last thing I'm gonna add to this, I want to make sure that we have data before we make a pivot table. So before we run the rest of this macro, when we get the last row in our data, which is gonna be our worksheet right here, we want to make sure that the last row is greater than one. Because if you just have one row on top, that means you're not gonna be able to make a pivot table from that. And here we're gonna add an if statement. We're gonna say if LR is less than two, then, and if, and we're gonna say exit sub. So we're gonna terminate this subroutine and maybe we'll add a message here. We'll do a message box, we'll say, must have data for a pivot table. So that will be our error message. This should be MSG, there it is. So now if we are, let's say on this worksheet and we try to run this, see it says must have data to do a pivot table. Another thing we could do, we could also get the last column and make sure that we have six columns at least to make this, right? Or also check some sort of columns thing. So I could also do that control left in the first row 
and make sure we get here. Because right now, if we try to run this, for example, on this one, it's gonna think that the last row is 13 and it's still gonna run this macro on this worksheet, which is gonna fail. So again, these are optional steps. We basically add to do some error handling. So I'm gonna do something to find the last column. So I'll do the first row and we'll do columns dot count. And then we'll do and Excel to left and we'll get the column number. Again, the method I'm using to find the last row and last column is control up and control left. And control left is gonna happen in the first row, meaning if we do it, for example, on this particular worksheet, we're gonna end up in the first column. But if we do it in this one, in the first row, we will end up in column number six. So again, now we can say if the last row is less than two or our last column is less than, and again, you'll have to pick your number. I'm gonna say less than six. Then we want to give this error message. Otherwise, we're gonna run the rest of this macro. So now what would happen if I go, for example, on this tab and run this, it says, must have data for a pivot table. If I go to a blank worksheet and I run this, still get the error message. If I go to my data sheet and I run this, runs just fine. I'm gonna get rid of all this comments here. And that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.